when a patient tests positive for COVID-19, everyone they came into contact with must be traced and placed in isolation. It is painstaking work, but it is important to slow down the spread of the virus. Suppose this circle represented a patient infected with COVID-19. Before they go into isolation, they may interact with family members, colleagues at work, fellow passengers in a bus or a matatu. Perhaps they will go to a restaurant and chat with a waiter or a cashier as they wait to be served. All these people would need to be traced and isolated from the general public for the duration that the disease incubates in one's body. In most cases, one will test positive within the incubation period. For COVID-19, that incubation period is 14 days. If within that time these contacts test negative, then they're allowed to leave quarantine. It is a very hard uh, job unless we work as a team. The local people, the administration, yeah, we should not have any gap. Okay. Just like their colleagues countrywide, the Rift Valley team is chasing this chain of transmission. At their command center in Nakuru, they are tracing contacts of positive patients in the region. Their process is manual. We have something called an official document. We are using, we call it a contact tracing form. Like for example, what, what the regional commission have talked about, that person from Mombasa. We went, to the, to, uh, went down to the, to, to the ground and we, with the form, we were able to list all those people they came to contact to. Let's take this specific patient's case. We know that the lady traveled from Mombasa to Nakuru aboard a Dreamliner bus. There are 21 people identified from the bus as possible contacts. She went to her sister's apartment in Nakuru. Her sister and brother-in-law are now direct contacts and have been put in isolation. The apartment block has 29 families, all of whom have been put in quarantine. But there are also indirect contacts, like six people who work with a brother-in-law and may have been at risk of contracting the virus. These 56, where else did they go? If they, they turn positive, we are now going to also to enlist the contacts of the contacts. The first step to contact tracing is an interview between the infected patient and health officials. The patient is supposed to say where they've been, who they've been with, and the proximity of the interaction. Now, supposing I tested positive for the new coronavirus, I would have to tell health officials that I've been driving this evening to an assignment with my colleague Paul. Paul then becomes one of my direct contacts. Now, the complication of this process comes when a patient either decides to lie about where they've been or who they've been with, or if someone in quarantine decides to break the quarantine rules and interacts with more members of the public. The person who came from China, he, came, he, he had already signed a form to say that he would be self-quarantined, but he did not observe the quarantine. He came to, into contact with so many people, about 16 people. And those 16 people, we also were enlisting their contacts. In Mandera, it's a rush to find contacts of two patients who traveled from Kilifi into Mombasa, then Nairobi, and finally to Mandera town. The easiest starting point for officials here is the bus that arrived in Mandera. Tumepata majina ya watu wote ambao walikuwa kwa bus. Tumepata ile viti walikuwa meketi na watu wenye walikuwa meketi na wao. Na sasa tunafuatilia. It's no walk in the park. But contact tracing has proven successful in slowing down the spread of other diseases like Ebola. The crucial but elusive task now is to remain on the tracks of the chain of transmission of this highly infectious disease. Ashamwilu, Citizen TV, Nairobi.